Good evening. Welcome to all our special guests to the January 16 board meeting of the Akima School Board. Um, we do offer interpretation services. We offer Spanish interpretation services from Jorge with language connections. If you need translation assistance in person, please check with Jorge for a device. Jorge, would you translate that information for our audience, please? Si alguien necesita la ayuda de un intérprete, tenemos el sistema para hacerlo. Si por favor pasen, les puedo dar el rol. Gracias. Thank you, Jorge. We also provide live streaming for this meeting. The link can be found on our webpage under Board of Directors or by going directly to www.ysd7.org slash board meetings. If you wish to make a public comment this evening, there are two options available for you. The first option is for commenting on agenda items only. And the second option, which comes toward the end of the meeting, is for all other topics. In order to speak tonight, you will need to sign two forms, a sign-in form and a guidelines form. And those are available at the table in the back of the room. If you are interested in watching past meetings, you may find them on our web pages, YSD. YouTube channel. And now, if you'd like to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Next, we have the uh, Miranda College. Today, the schools of the Yakima School District rest on the ancestral lands of the 14 confederated tribes and bands of the Yakima Nation. Hoy, las escuelas del Distrito Escolar de Yakima descansan en las tierras ancestrales de las 14 tribus y bandas confederadas de la Nación Yakima. The people of the Yakima Nation inhabited more than 12 million acres. La gente de la nación Yakima habitó más de 10 billones de acres. Across Adams, Benton, Chelan, Douglas, Franklin, Grant, Kittitas, Cligata, and Yakima counties. En los condados de Adams, Benton, Chelan, Douglas, Grant, Franklin, Kittitas, Kikitat, and Yakima. Today, we honor those Native peoples who are tied to the land through history, legends, and culture. Hoy honramos a estos pueblos originales que están vinculados en la tierra a través de historias, leyendas, y culturas. We acknowledge our descendants who live in the world today. Reconocemos a sus descendientes que viven en el mundo de hoy. We thank the caretakers of this land who have lived here and continue to live here since time immemorial. Agradezcamos a los guardianes de la tierra quienes han vivido aquí y continúan viviendo aquí desde tiempos inmemoriales. An acknowledgement is a simple, powerful way to show respect. Un reconocimiento es una manera simple y poderosa de mostrar respeto. And a step toward correcting the stories and practices that erase indigenous people's history and culture. Y un paso hacia la corrección de las historias y prácticas que borran la historia y la cultura de los pueblos indígenas. It also honors the truth. También honra la verdad. As a school district, we will continue to build upon our relations with the Yakima Nation. Como distrito escolar, continuaremos fortaleciendo nuestras relaciones con la nación Yakima. Thank you to our Yakima students. We have a couple of special occasions this evening. Um, uh, we're excited and thrilled to recognize some important students to our district. First off, we have some students from Yakima Open Door and Yakima Online class of 2024 semester graduations and GEDs. And I'd like to compliment the students on behalf of the board uh, for two reasons. One is you've completed something you started. That's an important completion to to finish what you start. And you've done that now. You can do that many, many times in the future. And now you know it's within you. And the second thing is a commencement or a graduation is actually a beginning. By completing this process, you will open doors for yourself in the future 
to either employment opportunities or educational opportunities. And you're also going to have some very happy and proud parents and guardians in your life that, to have seen you do this. So we welcome all of you here. I'd like to introduce uh, Lois Menard, who will read the names of the graduates that are here. And when your name is read, would you please come up and just kind of make a circle around here? Because just like any graduation, we'd like to shake your hand. And then you'll be presented with a with a certificate here, and I believe there will be an opportunity for pictures at the end of the presentation, okay? So, Mrs. Menard. Well, good evening, and thank you, President Walker, the Yakima School Board of Directors, superintendents, staff, and the community. I'd like to introduce my staff who are here this evening. I have Mr. John Lang is a teacher at Stanton, and Luis Machado is a case manager for Open Doors. And then we have Tanya George is a teacher for Yakima and Lang. Thank you for being here this evening. So we have 16 total students. They're not all here tonight. We have six. Uh, they have finished their high school education since our last graduation, which is in June 2023. So they finished already. They are early graduates. At Yakima Online, it's a high school for freshmen through age 21 where students earn a diploma. Open Doors is a re-engagement school where students must be age 16 and they may obtain a GED or a high school diploma. Open Doors is reserved for students who are behind in credit. And we have one student on our list that got both her GED and her diploma. Her name is Cass Folsom, and she couldn't be with us this evening. So both schools are opportunities for students to excel in a non-traditional setting. Students do their schoolwork on a computer, and when it is convenient for their schedule, they can work on their courses at home or at school or any time of the day. 24 hours, seven days a week. So parents, there's no excuses for getting your schoolwork done. There is a teacher support, both in person and remotely. And you will find Google meetings going on at all times of the day. We are so proud of our students accomplishing this great achievement before June of 2024. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to show you a slideshow of all of the students who have finished right now. And I want to give my compliments to Mr. Luis Machado, who did the slideshow for us. So thank you, Luis.
Yes, let's hear it for all of our completers. Okay, next, Mr. Lang is going to read uh, the names of the students. I'll be over here doing the management of where to go. And he will say their name and say one sentence about them. So, uh, uh, graduates, can you stand? Go ahead and stand up. Uh, Gabriela, um, you worked so hard to finish your diploma. Um, and uh, until the very last day of August, you got it done. We are so proud of you. Congratulations. <laughs> Isaac Paris. Um, I know it was a long, hard road, um, but you never stopped and you got it done. Great work. Congratulations. <laughs> Isabella Martinez, uh, you showed a lot of perseverance and dedication and you never stopped and you got it done. Congratulations. Carlos Salgado Valdovinos, um, you are always very respectful and polite, Carlos, and you're headed off to become a pilot and fly the friendly skies. Congratulations. <laughs> Emily Cano Vesera, uh, you worked full time in a fruit packing warehouse last year while taking online classes. Uh, lots of late nights, lots of early mornings, but you did it and you were able to graduate early in October. Congratulations. Angelica. Uh, Uh, you worked so hard, um, and now in front of your future, you plan to attend YVC and pursue medical assisting. Fantastic. Good work, Angelica. And with the people that were supporting these students in their life outside of school, would you stand so we can see who's here with them? Yes, hey. I'm going to do it now. Or, oh, it's 40 minutes. Well, afterwards, I'm going to take a minute break and part of it. Nobody makes it in life totally alone. We all have a support system. Next up, we have uh, special recognition for some career and technical students. Mr. Clem C. from Davis High School with, or is Clem at the Skill Center? Skill Center. I said Davis High School because I remember Clem as a student. Yeah, all of the, all of the above, right? <laughs> well, uh, board members and community members and administration and teachers and parents, so happy to be here today. I'm going to wait for the, uh, is it ready to go for me? Okay. Okay. Fantastic. So, uh, my name is Clem C. I'm the career and college readiness specialist at uh, at YV Tech. Uh, we are a career, uh, career center meant for uh, Yakima and Lower Upper Valley, Upper Valley students to come and, and have a technical training. Typically, we're 11th and 12th grade students, but we also see homeschool students. We see many students from Yakima Online. I, many of you are at, at experienced our, our our training as well, and um, And so this year, we've, we've done something pretty fun with the support of, and I want to introduce you to, we have a new uh, leader in the building, Ms. Bonnie Smith. He's in the back. Uh, we really appreciate her leadership this year. Um, Mr. Fung Fong, he is our vice prin uh, principal in the building. He and I hatched a plan a couple years back to, to try and get this ball moving. And with the support of Ms. Smith, we were able to uh, finally launch the National Technical Honor Society in our building this year. Um, so... Just a real brief 
overview of what that program is and what it does for our, our students. Um, the, many of your high schools offer honor societies, but the time commitment that students take when they, when they come to us, they're with us for about three hours a day, and it really takes away from their ability to participate in honor societies uh, at their home high schools. It becomes really difficult. So in 1984, National Technical Honor Society came along to support the same mission uh, with a little bit more of an emphasis on career training, which we know career training is, is becoming more and more important as our parents and, and, and grandparents begin to start retiring. We need to fill those voids, and that's where our building has really stepped up, I think, to create uh, incredible opportunities for people. Uh, the, the columns of the National Technical Honor Society are to reward excellence in workforce education. They also spend time to help develop the self-esteem, pride, and encourage students to reach for higher levels of achievement in, in our programs and in their academics and in their communities, as well to promote business and industry critical workplace values. Um, the, most, the ones that we tend to call out are the honesty, responsibility, initiative, teamwork, productivity, leadership, leadership and citizenship. And if I could just emphasize those words just a little bit, we want honest people in our workplaces. We want people that our business owners can trust. Uh, we want people that will keep, uh, keep you safe when they've built the building for you to work in. Um, and so those are not things that we necessarily talk about when we're training you to use a bandsaw. But, uh, but this group of people are, are the ones that are going to kind of take that message and take it into their organizations. We're building those leaderships and the uh, leaders and managers that will go into these workplaces and, and uh, champion these, uh, uh, these, these values, right? Um, finally, we're also looking to build, uh, help schools build and maintain effective partnerships with local businesses and industries. That's something that our building has worked uh, on since its inception. We communicate with local industry, we communicate with, with businesses, not only in Yakima, but businesses in all the way down from Mabton all the way up into the Kittitas area. And the, the uh, choice there is to make sure that students, no matter where they are, that we're coming to them and we're providing opportunities for businesses that uh, no matter where they are. Um, so it's important that we build those relationships with those uh, with those businesses, and uh, and that they know that we're uh, we're not slacking when it comes time for us to train uh, next generation's workforce, not just in the skills but in the values uh, that that they need to uh, to support their young workforce and their new workforce. So these students uh, who I brought with me today are a selection of our second year students. Our programs can be one or two years, and so the students that we brought with us today are are, are uh, examples of students that have been with us for one and a half years now. They're viewed as leaders in their classrooms. They're trainers and mentors of the first year students that have been in their building. Uh, they've done so much to help us around the building. In one case, he actually works uh, on the side to help support uh, students from all over the Yakima uh, uh, school district as he repairs their laptop. So I'm gonna go through a, a, some slides here. And when I reach one of the students that, that came with us today, I'll, I'll have, them, uh, have them stand up and wave at us. You guys ready for this? Okay. <laughs> so as we go through this list, um, oh, look at that. One more, one more uh, value here. Uh, also, we want to champion more positive image for the workforce education in America. I don't want to go too long on this, but it is important that we respect the value of workforce education in, uh, in America and find a way to tie that to our academic training. Um, they're not two separate things. They are, they are one. And, and, and students in our construction class become uh, algebra and geometry wizards. People in our electrical classes aren't just wiring, they're learning uh, about physics and electronics and, and science and physics, uh, I said physics, but uh, the, the uh, content areas that they would be studying in their high school. So what a great way to meld all of that training. Okay, so one of our students, Celeste, was not able to be here today. She's in our physical therapy program. Fantastic leader. She is uh, one of our historians uh, for the program. Um, Yachty, she is a, a cybersecurity uh, expert and is, is an immense uh, uh, um, help to all those first year students in that program, and especially the, the females that join a program that, um, that are looking for a, a mentor. Um, we, we love having her in the building as well. 
Um, Fabian, who's right back here, he's going to stand up and wave real quick. <laughs> he's the one I spoke about. He's a great... I don't know. Yeah, okay, come on up. <laughs> you can shake my hand first. So while, while he's walking up, let me just tell you, Fabian, you will often find him in the back behind piles of laptops as he's fixing all those laptops that we've checked out the students, um, tearing off the screens, replacing the screens, replacing the batteries. Um, he is somebody that is going to be incredibly marketable. Uh, I'm really excited uh, to see where he lands in the future. Thank you, Fabian. I guess I didn't plan for where they were going. Uh, next, we have uh, Gilberto. He's one of our dental assistants. This year, we have a number of de uh, dental assistants that uh, that that are leading us in this uh, charge to create this um, this program with us. Javi is an, is an information technology pathway, but he is also a cybersecurity expert. A very difficult job. Uh, those those uh, threats are are are, are new, and, and and more of them come every day. And so these folks, their class changes every day. Every day something new is happening. Their curriculum changes every day, every minute almost. Um, Jonathan Gonzalez, he is in our interpretation program. Uh, as an interpreter and a translator, he's working to uh, hone his skills to be able to help uh, with, with the skills that some of us are, are taking advantage of tonight. Uh, so I'm excited for him as well as one other uh, classmate of his, which we'll get to in a moment. Mr. Jose Mata, come on up. You can just tell by Jose's smile, he's going to be uh, 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 he's going to be a real hit in the dental world when he gets out there, and, and, and his bedside manner is is um, already uh, very inviting. So he, he's got a lot of fans in the in the dental world already. So I'm excited uh, again for his his future as well. Thank you, Jose. What a smile. <clears throat> Juliana is also in our translation and interpretation program, and again. Uh, that takes a lot of practice to, to hone those skills to be able to interpret as fast as as fast as, uh, as fast as we need. Uh, Mr. Kyan Helseth, he is in our physical therapy program, a, a sports whiz himself, and he's working to uh, help people get back on the field after they've experienced an injury uh, or potentially in the workplace, get them back to work. Uh, Mrs. Maya Navarro, she is also in our dental hygiene program. And we have Sean Milkey. He's here. Come on up. Sean's a fan of basketball. He uh, has about every jersey I've ever seen. Uh, this summer, he helped me co-teach. Uh, Sean helped me co-teach our entertainment media program. So he's somebody with the uh, with the uh, ability to mentor people in 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 camera work and sound, audio design, and video editing as well. He saved my bacon during that first week of class that I was working and subbing for his teacher. So I uh, love working with that guy as well. So my friends, I appreciate your time tonight and our, uh, our team. Uh, we have 30 members at the moment, and we expect to see them out there in the community with community service opportunities, um, workforce development training, and, uh, and a number of things. This, this will not be the last time you hear from us for sure. So I appreciate your time, and, and thank you. Thank you. This is an opportunity to take some photos. If you'd like to take a photo in front of our board here of your student, or, or do, do the teachers want to take at least one group photo? Okay. Remember to smile. Thank you all our parents and students for being here tonight. Feel free to go get warm. <laughs> Graciela, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, did you want to go ahead and read the proclamation? Sure. Okay, we'll... 
before you do that, we will gavel back in. We did not actually take roll call yet, so we'll take roll so we can be official. Okay, Barb. Director Rice. Here. Vice President Villanueva. Here. Here. President Walker. Here. And Directors Navarro Jr. and Director Beckett are excused. Okay, next up we have a proclamation that will be read by Director Villanueva. Yes, thank you. It is my pleasure and honor today to read our Martin Luther King Jr. Day proclamation. Power in the people, freedom, equality, and prosperity. Whereas on January 15, 2024, our nation commemorates the federal designated Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And whereas this day serves as an opportunity for profound reflection on Dr. King's enduring message of peace, his unwavering commitment to advancing freedom, equality, and justice through nonviolent means, and his call for active engagement and service to others. And whereas within the Yakima School District, our students wholeheartedly embrace the essence of this holiday, engaging in meaningful reflection, continuous learning, and dedicated service aligned with Dr. King's principles. And whereas volunteers of diverse ages will, will unite with students, contributing to impactful service projects that fortify communities, empower individuals, and build bridges, fostering understanding and collaboration. Now, therefore, be it resolved, as the Yakima School District Board of Directors, we proclaim that the Yakima School District stands with the nation in recognizing January 15, 2024, as Martin Luther King Jr. Day, dated this 16th day of January, 2024, Yakima School District Board of Directors. Thank you, Director Villanueva. We have an additional proclamation that will be read by Assistant Super Deputy Superintendent um, Stacey Lawrence. Thank you, President Walker. Uh, it's an honor to read this proclamation uh, in regard to school board recognition. Whereas the mission of Washington's public school system is to ensure that all students achieve at high levels and possess the knowledge and skills to be responsible members of a democratic society and enjoy productive and satisfying lives. And whereas Washington's 1,477 locally elected school boards of directors and nine elected educational service district boards are the core of the public education governance system in our state. Serve more than 1.1 million students have combined, have a combined annual budget of over $15 billion and employ approximately 120,000 people. And whereas school boards play a crucial role in promoting student learning and achievement by creating a vision, establishing policies and budgets, and setting clear standards of accountability for all involved. And whereas school board directors are directly accountable to the residents in their districts and regions, serving as a vital link between members of the community and their schools. And whereas school boards and ESDs provide a passionate voice of advocacy for public schools and the welfare of school children. And whereas it is appropriate to recognize school board directors as outstanding public servants and champions for public education. Now, therefore, I, Jay Inslee, governor of the state of Washington, do hereby proclaim January 2024 as school board recognition month in Washington, and I encourage all people in our state to join me in this special observance. Signed this eighth day of December, 2023, Governor Jay Inslee. Okay, moving on with our agenda, we have updates from members of the board. Do we have any updates? I just want to report um, on a little bit of what's going on in Olympia these days. A very little bit, because um, they only have some somewhere over, I think, close to a thousand bills that they're 
working on right now and the deadline is coming up quickly where the initial flush of bills will um, that have not gotten out of their house of origin and committee of origin they will in all intents and purposes die but nothing in olympia is ever dead so they might be able to be resurrected depending on if they're if they have to do with the budget or they have some other means in mind. Um, and that deadline is the 30th or 31st of this month. So um, everybody's racing right now to that date. Uh, a particular focus with the legislature in the educational arena it are bills that, um, that are focused on isolation and I just lost the word restraint of uh, students in our school buildings this is some this is a bill that um, went part way through the legislature last year it didn't make it all the way through so it has come back um, there have been hearings in I believe both the House and Senate on it, on it, and um, or on them because there's more than one, um, and there's a lot of energy being expended on behalf of either for or against those particular bills. Another um, another area of focus right now are is a a bill regarding uh, paraeducator pay or class. It's essentially it's classified pay, but it's focusing on paraeducators. And that is um, currently in committee. And I expect that that will probably make it out of committee and into the other house, depending on whether it's in the House or Senate, into the other side um, before too long. So we'll see what both of those bring. There are lots of other education bills. But um, those are the two that ha are of particular focus this week in, in the legislature. Thank you, Director Rice, for the updates. Um, I'd also like to add just one board update. I had the privilege today of participating in another training session with some of our staff and some of our teachers on this, um, professional learning communities and professional learning teams. and. Um, it's really exciting to me to see what's happening in the detail and the, and the rigor that our teachers and the principals are using to address the needs of our students and to drill down to how we can improve at a very basic level and a very detailed level the, our students' progress. And I, I just, I'm really encouraged by the work in that area. And I hope that as a board, we can continue to support that as a state and the funding that those kinds of things can continue because I really think they're crucial to turning things around in education and serving all of our students effectively. And we have the privilege of um, watching our Lewis, our team from Lewis and Clark Absolutely. present to via Zoom to the I don't know twenty or so people that were on the call from across the state. So good on Lewis and Clark. Absolutely. Okay, any other updates from the board? Okay. Here, seeing none and hearing none, we'll move to the superintendent's update. Thank you, President Walker. Uh, I'd like to dovetail off of uh, Martha's words, uh, Director Rice, and talking about the legislature. Uh, on the 24th, which is next Wednesday, I will be in Olympia, and I already have appointments set with Representative Tomiko Santos, uh, which is a big meeting. I'm excited about that opportunity, as well as Representative McIntyre, Senator Wellman, Senator Nobles, and uh, Representative Ortiz self so far. Um, so we're still working to fill in some of the gaps there during the day, but I'm excited about that opportunity to uh, share our legislative priorities and uh, talk about what's important to he us here in the uh, Yakima Valley, in the Yakima School District. Uh, other items that I would share with you is that uh, we had a wonderful, uh, wonderful participation of the MLK Junior Peace March, and I'll, I'll ask for Barb to just share some of those photos. 
Um, the Yakima School District was so well represented. It was uh, truly amazing to have so many people present, um, as you'll see from uh, the photos that are up there. Uh, we had principals from across our system, as well as teachers, um, uh, other, other people involved, ex executive directors, assistant superintendents, and um, uh, students as well. Absolutely, you see the photos of the students, but you'll, I think I primarily highlighted a lot of the uh, administrative staff that was present. Uh, as well as uh, people from the city. We have students here that uh, uh, said the Pledge of Allegiance at the beginning of the ceremony. So it was a peace march and a celebration ceremony. In addition, um, also community members you see here, City Councilman Barrera, uh, Drew Harris, one of our uh, city businessmen. We even had the Knob Hill Elementary Nighthawk show up. Uh, so everybody was there. One of our student speaker keynotes was uh, this young man here. Um, uh, name escapes me right now. I can't believe it. Judah Oldenkamp, of course, of course. Hopefully he's not watching. Sorry, Judah. Um, so it was good. To, he did just a wonderful job. Uh, it was uh, a really a great celebration. Uh, Reverend Trimble, who is very much invested in our community and was instrumental in passing the name change of uh, for Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, uh, was a keynote as well. And he noted that the attendance uh, was uh, the best, in quoting his terms, the best that he had seen or could remember. So it speaks uh, highly. Uh, we know that many were canceled across the, across the state, but the uh, uh, participation here from the Yakima School District, uh, both in students and staff and faculty were, were fantastic. In addition, I wanted to daylight one other item for the board. And as a recovering secondary school principal, uh, I did not ever recognize the importance of the 100th day of school at the elementary level. So uh, the 100th day of school for uh, secondary school is the 100th day of school. I don't know if we notice, it just comes and goes and uh, it's not a big deal. And um, I just so happened that last year I was in a building on the 100th day and it was an elementary school. And wow, I had no idea. It is um, one of the biggest uh, events uh, that I've seen. And uh, I made a special note. I came back to Barb and I'm like, Barb, write it down. And uh, the day is fast approaching. Uh, it is uh, February 12th, is the 100th day of school. And if you so chose to uh, visit a school and to just partake of uh, the wonderful atmosphere and festivities, uh, I, I know that uh, in one building I remember seeing, uh, I think the kindergarten students all had aged photos of themselves uh, pinned up on the bulletin board. So it's, it's a big deal. And uh, I would encourage you that if you wanted to experience that, uh, it, it would be well worth the uh, uh, effort to uh, uh, coordinate with Barb and I'd be happy to take you around. So my, my schedule on that 100th day is 100th day. And we've sent out invitations to the elementaries to like, if you got something planned and you want me there, let me know. If not, I might drop in anyway. So um, aside from that, uh, we had some board retreat follow-up items, but seeing how we are missing uh, three of our members in person. I'm glad that uh, Director Villanueva is present uh, via Zoom. Uh, we would ask, uh, or I would ask for uh, permission to postpone and share that out. Uh, we had some documents to react to around uh, principals, uh, LES uh, for the reduction of, uh, of the budget and other items, the proclamation type of uh, things that we discussed in our board retreat. So if it pleasures the board, I would ask for an extension on that. And then nothing else except to just share one more notable uh, observation is that we do have uh, Assistant Superintendent uh, Anthony Marietta and Assistant Superintendent uh, Bob No are on vacation this week, and that's why they're not here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Green. One other, the next item on the agenda is calendar updates and future agenda topics. And I'd like to highlight just one day in there, which is the day after the 100th day of school, which is February 13th is election day and ask you to vote or i can ask you to vote i can't ask you how to vote but please be sure and vote encourage all uh, registered voters to vote um, your vote is important it's our democracy works best okay next up we have uh, mr cooper with our monthly <laughs> thank you members of the board and graciela thank you for hanging in there with us i appreciate it so this evening, um, first off, before I begin, I wanted to say uh, uh, this is my first time in Yakima that I saw that 
uh, GED Open Doors graduation ceremony, and that was, I told Stacy that's why I'm in education. So thank you for that. It was really awesome to see those kids finish, as Director Walker said, finish what they started. So sorry, that was a little point of personal privilege. I apologize, Superintendent. Um, <clears throat> so this evening before you, um, fortunately, it's a very typical and boring December financial report. You should not expect anything exciting in the month of December in school finance. So much like last month, um, enrollment is below projection, but I will take you to a very bright spot. Um, well, bright spot because our numbers are accurate, meaning our cash flow is in line with projection. So Barbara, if you want to go, um, enrollment again, you can see from the chart uh, throughout the school year, we continue to lose uh, students um, about 70 between November and December count, which puts us um, about 300 below projection. However, um, given that we have I used attrition and um, uh, continue to save money throughout the fiscal year. We will be uh, where we are, where we were, where we should be at, as projected in our, in our prior uh, budget uh, presentations. So enrollment will be declining, but um, at the same time, that is planned for. So Barbara, if you wouldn't mind going. So there's the enrollment graph. Not very exciting. Projected is always flat, and you can see uh, the slight dip from November to December. Mm -hmm. The budget actuals, um, in this case, this is revenue. Now, I'll talk about revenue. I wanted to point out to you that December revenue is a little bit less than projected. Um, the reason for that is that we just today got our IDEA special ed grant approved. So um, we have about $1.8 million of expenditures that we're now be able to claim that we're, we're waiting grant approval. So um, that $2 million, that gap in revenue should be accommodated for in the following month. So I just kind of wanted to let you know why there was a, a shortfall in that December revenue and when you should be seeing the revenue come back to the district in January. So I'll go ahead. Uh, budget actual comparison, again, um, expenditures are in line uh, with historical averages. And that is what we want to see in the middle of the, of the school year and fiscal year in particular. That boring um, budget is set, staffing is set, enrollment is where it's at, and apportionment and taxes are flowing through at a normal pace. Um, this is what I wanted to highlight, this um, meeting in particular. So there are sometimes, uh, when you're in my position, there is often a questioning of, of numbers and are you accurate and are you really telling us, you know, that we're going to be in this big of a budget deficit, Mr. Cooper? And so what I like to often show people is um, where I have projected our cash position to be and where we're actually at. So again, our cash flow is uh, slightly below projection, but I would say that's in line. That's about a $2 million gap between projected and actual in that line. But why I wanted to highlight it is that you can definitely see that cash is um, look beginning to decrease and we're going into that trough period which we talked about during our budget presentation um, most pointedly though is that i wanted to demonstrate that those numbers are appear to be coming to fruition and that our cash is dropping and we should expect it to end very close to where it is currently projected by the fiscal year end so that's kind of a mid-year check we will watch it again as we watch that trough we'll watch it month by month uh, together and just to make sure our cash is where it needs to be but again that is the best predictor of your year-end financial uh, fund balance and your year-end cash flow picture is that projected cash flow. Any questions on the cash flow? And then borrow my... Let's see what... Um, and then the ESSER slides, again, we have a, just a small amount of uh, ESSER funding remaining to round out. Um, so the encumbered portions are the last remaining portions of the uh, Early Learning Center, which is about which is being constructed currently, um, which we did not take a tour on of our board retreat, but we, we did take a tour of, of Davis Auditorium. So again, those funds are completely obligated and will be fully uh, expended um, as soon as Discovery or Learning Center is complete, which should be in a short time period. Okay, any questions? So recap, enrollment is below projection, which it has been. Cash is on projection, um, which is where we want it to be. ESSER is fully going to be fully expended and, um, as of right now, boring and predictable for what we're, we're striving for. And so that's where we're at. So any questions? I'd be happy to answer them for this large crowd. Large crowd in, in attendance. Thank you so much. Okay, next up we have consent agenda. 
which includes approval of minutes, notification of approval of warrants for December. I move that we approve the consent agenda as submitted. A second. Norma, I can't hear anything you're saying. I'm not sure if your button's on. There it is. Can you uh, hear me now? Thank you. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Any further discussion? Okay, why would you call the roll, please? Director Rice. Aye. Vice President Villanueva. Aye. President Walker. Aye. Motion passes three to zero. Thank you. Next up, we have two policy governance items. One is policy 1000.3.8. And that has to do with agenda planning. And I believe this is first reading on these two. So to accomplish, I'm not going to read it in detail. I'll just kind of summarize agenda planning to accomplish its work products with the governance style consistent with board policy, board of directors will follow an annual agenda which examines student achievement, examines organizational performance, improves board performance through board education and enrichment, and has ends goals policies are reviewed, and those are reviewed on a regular calendar. Um, the board's planning cycle will conclude each year on the last day of October so that administrative planning and budgeting based on accomplishing a new one-year segment of the board's most recent statement of long-term ends and goals. The cycle starts with the board's development of its agenda for the next year. The annual planning calendar will include consultation with selected groups in the community or other methods of gaining community ownership and input. Board development and training designed to <clears throat> excuse me, designed to improve the board's ability to perform its work, scheduling monitoring reports. These will be included on the agenda and the superintendent's contract renewal and conditions, which is upcoming very soon. And to be decided on the review of the monitoring reports. So, are there any other comments or suggestions regarding this? I have a question. Um, the agenda shows uh, cost of governance 1000.3.8 as oh. the one we will be, we should be um, discussing. That's but when I go to the link, it's it's what you share, 3.3. 3.3 is what's showing. Okay. Yeah. So is it 3.3 or is it 3.8? I just read That's okay. Okay, three point. So cold in here, I can't read the numbers either. <laughs> build, build a fire in the middle of the room. Three point nine is correct. It's correct. Why don't, can you bring up 3.8 while we, we'll go through 3.9 and then you can bring up 3.8. 3.8 is, if I remember correctly, it's a relatively small, short. Um, four, three, three. Let's do 3.9. Okay. Uh, 3.9 is the process for addressing board member violations. Let me address that recently. Board and each of its members are committed to full compliance with the provisions of board policies. In the event of a member's violation of policy, the board will seek remedy by the following process. One, converse in a private setting between the offending member and the board president or other individual member. Two, discuss in a private session between the offending member and the full board as permitted by law. Three, possibly remove from any leadership or committee positions to which the offending member has been appointed or elected, and four, publicly censure the offending member of the board 
this process is progressive, except at discretion. Comments or I believe that policy has worked well in the past for this board. So we will, unless there are any comments from Director Villanueva, we will move that to Survey Monkey. We'll go back to 3.8. Can you read 3.8? Three point eight cost of governance. Because poor governance costs well more than learning to govern well, the board will invest in in the governance capacity, in its governance capacity. Accordingly, board skills, methods, and supports will be sufficient to assure governing with excellence. And then there's three bullets that deal with um, training and retraining, outside monitoring assistance, if we so choose to do that, and outreach mechani mechanisms um, in order to uh, ensure the board's ability to meet its ends and goals. Could you roll that up a little bit, Barb, please? Yeah. Costs will be prudently incurred, though not in, at the expense of endangering the development and maintenance of superior capability. Annually, the board will develop and approve a budget for training, monitoring, and advocacy mechanisms for the coming year. Additional member commitments or expenditures require board approval. Comments? Any comments, questions? Additions for that policy. Okay. We'll just submit that for Survey Monkey. And we've now arrived at a second opportunity for public comment. Has a new person entered the room that would like to make a comment? Okay. okay. If there is no executive session this evening, we do not have an attorney present. Okay. President Walker. Yes. The survey monkeys are going to come out. There's going to be a total of six of them. They're due next Monday for our January 29th meeting. That's correct. Yeah, there's a clarification for our board members that the, there's four in that series. The survey monkey didn't actually get sent out. So we would do all six of them. They're all ready. You're up. Yeah, you're up. Any other questions, comments? Anything for the good of the order? Meeting adjourned. Please go home and get warm. <laughs>